and on other social media too. Audience, who will see this and what will they think about it? Oh, it is very important. Listen again, listen again. Again, I want to repeat. Who will see this? Who will see this? And what will they think about it? And what are their expectations? You know, some people work for companies where they are responsible for social media. So it is important to the type of wording they use when they are writing on Facebook. If you work at a company and you're writing for your company, it's going to be different than if you're writing for your friends. Okay, so it is the same with an essay. It is the same with an essay. An essay has a certain structure, you know, uh, actually, it is supposed to be a certain amount of pages. It has a certain organization to it. And so knowing what is expected of you when you write, an essay will help you because it's going to be very different than, for example, a Facebook post. Same with in business. In business report, understanding the format of a business report is important if this is something you are going to be writing and thinking about your audience same with executive summarize which is a type of thing business people write okay if you're not in business you might not every uh, ever write one of these but if you are in business you need to realize that the audience is important because professionals are going to be reading this oh sometimes you need sometimes you need actually uh to write in business and actually, you need to realize that audience is important because professionals are going to be reading this and these people are busy. So, you know, knowing your audience and knowing what is expected of you is the very first step to good writing. The first step of a good writing is knowing the audience. Let's look at other tips. Let's look at other tips. So, we have talked about genre or the type of writing you are doing. And part of this is knowing the expectation for how long what you write should be. OK, now, uh, can you change uh, the next slide? C can you change a slide? <clears throat> Please. OK, look at the next slide. I need someone to actually change this slide. Show us the next slide. Okay, the, actually guys, uh, the next slide, and so you want to know a bit about the length expectation, the length, uh, the length expectation. Look at the next slide, yeah the length expectations before you start writing okay the first was knowing the audience the second is if you want to write professionally uh actually uh, you want to know a bit about the length expectations before you start before you start writing before you start writing this is really important especially in university where you often have a number of pages you are allowed to write. It is important, you know, in the workplace, because sometimes, you know, you can write a lot. You can't write a lot. And it is important, you know, on Twitter and Instagram or Facebook, because you have a certain number of characters you can use. So length is very important because it's going to help you decide what to include in your writing. Oh. It is very important. Again, I repeat. I repeat for the second time. Length is very important because it is going to help you decide, okay? Decide what to include in your writing. Okay, so let's look at this a bit more. When I was younger, really, when I was younger, 
I used to think, okay, long, meaning a lot of writing was always better. But this is not the case. But this is not the case. You know, the more you write, maybe you can include more detail. But a lot of the times, the person or your audience who is reading what you write does not have a lot of time. And so they So, can, can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Sir, yes, sir. Okay, okay, sorry. I don't know uh, some technical issue uh, about some technical issues. Okay, again, I repeat again, no problem. I, 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 I repeat again, no problem. I told you when I was younger, when I was younger, I used to think long, meaning a lot of writing, okay, was always better. But this is not the case. It's not the case, actually. You know, the more you write, maybe you can include more detail, yes. But a lot of times, the person or the audience who is reading what you write does not have a lot of time. And so they don't want to read a long piece of work. So it is important to know expectations before the writing, before you start writing. So, for example, I have the word short. If you pay attention to the board, look at the board. I have a, I have a actually diagram. Uh, actually, I have here the word short and long. And so this is kind of the scale. Look at the scale. Look at the scale. OK, if you write a tweet, it's going to be something short. A Facebook post might be a little bit longer. A paragraph, you might write something like five sentences. If in a school, you have to write a paragraph on something, you know, you have to write five sentences. An email might be a little bit longer, okay? And actually, uh, a cover letter, you might use a full page. A resume, maybe you might use two pages, but nothing more. And then you might write an essay, which might be five pages. Okay, 10 pages. Actually, depending. And then maybe a report, which, which might be 15 pages. Who knows? Okay, depending on what is expected. So many main point here is that different types of writing have different expectations. I repeat again. I repeat again. Many. Uh, so my main point here. My what is my main point? My main point here is this: that the different types of writing have different expectations about audience, about the lengths. Audience, the lengths. Okay. Now, uh, very good. Now, <clears throat> it is really important to follow those expectations. For the students who are writing the TOEFL or the IELTS, okay, about the students. Uh, for students who are writing the TOEFL or the IELTS, you only can use a certain number. As you know, 115 words for task academic number one and uh, around. Uh, uh, 2015 to 2015 words uh, for writing task two in IELTS. OK, you have to use a, a certain lengths. OK, very good. Now, uh, it is very important uh, for you to know and really think about it. How, how are you going to get your message across using the right amount of words? OK, okie dokie. 
this is a key word we often talk about in good writing, and that is concise. I want to write for you in the chat box. Who can explain this? What is concise? What is concise in writing? Who can write for me? Who can answer about this? What is concise? This is a keyword we often talk about in good writing. And this is concise. What is concise in writing? I want you to write your uh, idea in the chat box. Please leave your comment here. Yes, I want to read your comment. Brief writing, yes, actually, absolutely, yes. Others? Oh, 20, 115 people are in this session and just a person write what happened brief and short yes mm, long no long is uh, is not correct brief writing yes brief writing mm -hmm. very good mm -hmm. Yes, brief writing, exactly, brief explanation. Yes, exactly, okay? Now, let's get it started again. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so when you are concise, it means you say something with as few words as possible. Oh, repeat again, okay? Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. When you are concise, when you are concise, it means you say something with as a few word as possible, but still getting the meaning across. So you are communicating your idea, but you are doing it in a short way. Oh, you give your idea, but give your idea in a short way. Huh? In a short way. Easy, easy peasy. Actually, as short as you can while still keeping the idea there. So in different cultures, you have different rules about this. For example, maybe in some cultures, longer is better. OK, in some cultures, but in English culture, the concise is important. Huh? The concise is important. Actually, uh, maybe yes. In some cultures, if you write longer, is is great. If you write longer, is great. No problems with more details. You write with more details. It it, it it actually it's not important. But in English culture, and if you write, if you want to write English essay, the concise is important. Keeping the idea short, okay, and very good. Um, actually, in English speaking cultures, usually we really want to get to the point. So we want something to be, we want to communicate our idea, but we want it to be in concise way. So using our words very carefully, so we don't use too many words. We don't use too many words. Okie dokie. Now, so main point here, know how long something you're writing should be and paying attention to this when you write. All right. Now let's let's look at my next tip. Um, please change the slide. Uh, go ahead and uh, show us, please, uh, the next tip. We want to talk about the next tip. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, look at the next tip. Let's look at my next tip. Okay, so my third point, my third point, 
actually might be one of the most Hi again, guys. Sorry, I'm back. A person actually removed me from this platform. I don't know why, but I'm back soon. I'm here. OK, don't worry. Uh, actually, uh, my third point, my third point is very important. Please look at the uh, actually um, slide. Look at actually and pay attention to board. OK, now. OK, now my third point. Here is very important, might be one of the most important points in this lesson, and that is when you write something very important to plan or to think about what you will say before you write it. What will you say and make a plan before writing? Uh huh. This is something a lot of people don't do because they are so busy. They feel like actually they don't have a lot of time. Or you know, they just don't have any ideas. And uh, the thing is, uh, uh, maybe though, that this will really help improve your writing. Really, it really help uh, improve your writing and it doesn't matter what you're writing planning out an email can be important if you want to write an email okay planning out it's very important if you want to make uh, an uh, a twitter post or uh, an instagram post uh, instagram post uh, planning out is very important okay uh, just like planning out an essay can be important. So let's think about same ways we can plan out what we want to write. OK, there are different ways to do this. There are different ways to do this. OK, to do what exactly? Some people like to, to make a plan by brainstorming. Do you know what is brainstorming, guys? Do you know what is brainstorming? OK, for example, imagine you you were writing a paragraph about cats. So you might have your subject or your key idea here and then you might think about, OK, what's something about cats? For example, I want to write exactly mind map discussion, sir. Yes, exactly. Um, actually, brainstorming is very important before writing. Uh, uh, look at me, look at me. For example, you want to write about cats. Please think, OK? Um, a police thing. I want to write about cat. OK, uh, what is something about cats? I, 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 I think with myself. And now uh, actually then make a great pets. Yeah, they are make a great pets. And then you might write some stuff about that. Maybe they are quiet. Yes, they are a good pet. Yeah, they are cheap. Yes, these are brainstorming. OK, and so the thing is just getting out your idea. Getting out your idea. 
and then you can organize your ideas better. Okay, uh, or maybe, you know, you're thinking, okay, cats, they eat food. What kind of food they eat? It is our brainstorming for writing better, huh? You have to make a plan before writing and a way before and a way to make a plan is brainstorming. It means think about what you want to write. Huh? And uh, for example, if you want to uh, write about cat, for example, you think, OK, they eat food. Mm, what kind of food, for example, do they eat? You write about the food. Huh? OK, so you can do the same thing with reports. You can think about, OK, what's the main ideas that I need to talk about in their reports? You know, when you just kind of brainstorm in advance, I usually do that when I write reports. And I, I find it very helpful, actually, just to get my idea down on paper. Remember, now, if you pay attention to board, I write down my idea. I write down my idea, cats, they are quiet, they are cute, they are, uh, for example, grumpy, they drink milk. Okay, I write my brainstorming, I write down my brainstorming on piece of paper, and after that, I think about these uh, brainstormings, and after that, I write my essay completely, and I organize them. Another thing you can do is you can just write down everything just like this with a dash. So, for example, if I was writing about cats in a paragraph, I might just start thinking, writing anything I think quiet, cute, grumpy cat, okay? And I might just write down all the ideas I have. Now, of course, you are probably not writing an essay or a paragraph on cats. You are probably writing something very different, but the idea is the same. OK, uh, the idea being it's important to plan and these are different great ways to get out actually uh, your idea, your ideas and to think about them before you actually write. Sometimes if you're writing an essay, you might think in advance about your thesis or what your the main topic and the main argument of your essay is going to be. So, for example, cats are better than dogs. It is, for example, um, an uh, essay issue. Cats are better than dogs. Now, we want to uh, do brainstorming. Can you write some of your brainstorming about this topic? Cats are better than dogs. Give me some of your brainstormings. Please write some of some uh, your brainstormings about cats are better than dogs. What comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Can you write for me? For example, I'm your professor and I want you to write this topic. Or for example, you are in IELTS. It's an IELTS test. And in IELTS says, for example, uh, this is uh, the topic. Cats are better than dogs. Okay, discussion your both views or discussion your views. Okay, uh, what are your brainstormings? What comes to your mind? Can you write for me some of them? Cats do not make much sound and dogs do. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. It's your brainstormings. Cats are always in a neat manner. Yes. Cats are smaller than dogs. Yes. Thank you. Okay. These are our brainstormings. Okay. And you have to write this brainstormings uh, on a piece of papers if you want to write an essay. Huh? Like IELTS, like TOEFL, like each academic actually type of writing. Now, um, very good, very good. My second main idea is that they are, uh, for example, a person said uh, they are great for apartments. And then I might write some examples or some reasons why. Okay, so my main point is all of this can work. 
uh, what helps you in terms of planning? There is many different ways to plan what you are going to write. But the most important thing is to plan and to take some time to think about what you want to say in advance because it will really help your writing. And it's very obvious. And it's very obvious when somebody hasn't planned uh, what they are going to write because everything disorganized and it is hard to follow. Planning make it easier for the audience to understand you. Now let's look at another tip for how to write better. Next tip about how to write better. Okay, so remember I said that it's very important to think about the type of writing you are doing and your audience or who is going to read it. One of the reasons why it is, uh, this is important is because depending on the type of writing you are going to, uh, you are going to write either in a formal way or in a formal way, okay? And I will explain why this is important to know and how it affects your writing. So. Uh, first, let's talk about what that means. Well, when you write something formally, okay, I, um, um, actually, I need a person change the slide and show us the next slide. Please show us the slide number four, please. Please show us a slide number four. <clears throat> we want to talk about how to write formally or informally. Okay. Uh, so, well, uh, when you write something formally, uh, this means that we choose certain words and certain types of sentences and we write a certain way and we write this way because our audience, because our audience uh, or the people who are going to read this are usually people from work. So we want to be professional. So we write formally when you uh, were being professional, we might write this way to strangers or customers. Hi again, and I'm back. I don't know why actually the platform announced me a person remove you. <laughs> it's it's very funny. It's very funny. Okay. Um, now, um, actually, um, now we continue. Um, if we work somewhere and we need to write an email, uh, actually, um, we need to write formally. We need to write formally. Um, for example, yes, in business writing, or you want to send uh, an email to your boss or to a professor, uh, we might use this type of language, formal language. And we also use formal language in high school, in university, in college, okay? And uh, when we are writing for an assignment or for our homework, uh, or something that our teacher or professor will read. Okay, so we use formal writing mainly in work setting and in academic or a school setting. Now, this is a different from informal writing. Informal writing is the type of writing you will be doing with your friends. So maybe, for example, a text message. 
that's informal. You might use this type of writing when you are talking to children or writing something uh, for children and also on social media. So if you write a tweet or Facebook post, usually you'll be using informal language and also with your family too. You're, uh, you usually use informal language. So I have here some examples of genres or types of writing that you might use the formal version or in the informal version. Uh, pay attention to the board, pay attention to the board. So under formal, we have essays. If you do that at university or high school, it would be formal. A cover letter, it would be formal. If you want to get a job and you have to write a cover letter, then this is going to be formal language you use. A report, if you work at a company and if you have to write reports, you will be using formal language. Or emails to customers, you will be using formal language. And there is a lot more. This is just some examples. For informal, if you pay attention, if you write a postcard to your family, you will be using informal language. A text message would be informal. An email to your friend, uh, you would use informal language or maybe a birthday card. It would be informal language. Okay, so it is important to think in advance what kind of language you are going to use. Okay, so how can we make something formal or informal with our language? There is a couple of ways to do this. I, I want to ask you this question. How can we make something formal or informal language? Can you answer me? How can we make something formal or informal with our language? Please write your actually comments. I want to read all comments. Okay, come on. How can we make something formal or informal with our language? Respected words. Yes, we can use some respective words. Just respective words. For example, if you want to write an essay, uh, for example, in... Um, for example, in down, okay? Uh, you write down, for example, best regards. Greetings. Actually, uh, do you think uh, if you use this, it can change informal language to formal language? Different words, maybe. For formal writing, we have to write in a respected words and informal. Respected words. What does it mean, respected words, for example? It means if you use just respected words, it means it is formal. But I don't think so. I don't think so. Just using respected words means, okay, I write formally. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Or it's a funny, just respected words? I don't think so, but what's your idea? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. Others, if you want to write something, again, respected words, again, respected words. Yes, respected words is just one way, one way. Grating and respected words is just one way to be formal, okay? Yes, give me others. Uh-huh, yes, exactly, uh, Mr. Aaron Joe, yes, exactly. Uh-huh, okay, uh, listen to me. Uh, ending note, yeah, ending note, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nice idea, nice idea. Okay, now, uh, look at the board. Look at the board, please. I write it for you. Look at the board. Uh, actually... It is important, I told you, the first thing you need to think about, uh, it's words you are going to use your vocabulary. 
So different words either fit into formal category or informal category. So for example, if we were talking about a lot of something and we want to be uh, informal, we might use the word lots. So this is an example for an informal word. Lots, we would use this with our friends. If we want to be a bit more formal, we are writing. You know, at university level, we might use the word many. This word is formal, whereas lot is more informal, okay? Or same with if we are writing an email, and at the very end of the email, we sign our name. We usually say something like from, but we don't use the word from. We, uh, we can say cheers if we are something an email. We can say, you know, cheers, cheers, Emma, okay, for informal. Or if you know, we are in a business and we need to be more serious and formal. We might say something like regards or kind regards. Same with different words like sorry. Sorry is a little bit informal, whereas the word apologize is more formal. So it's very important when you are choosing your words, okay, the first way to be in formal language, choosing your words, choosing uh, actually formal words, choosing formal words. For example, sorry is informal, apologize is formal, cheers is informal, best regards and regards are formal, okay? Now, it is very important when you're choosing your words because a lot of words fit either into this category or this category, and some words fit into both. It's a good to know the level of formality for the words you are using. Okay, the first way, it is a good to know the level of formality for the words you are using. Now, if you are having a lot of trouble with this and you are thinking, how am I going to know if the word is formal or informal? Uh, there is a quick tip you can try. It doesn't always work, but in general, longer words in English are often more formal. Again, I repeat again. In general, longer words in English are often more formal. So the longer words are usually in this category, in, in formal category. Okay, okay, and it is very important. It's not always the case, but just if you really don't know, for example, because some people say, okay, I can't uh, understand what words are formal, what words are informal, okay? I want to give you a tip and trick. The trick is this. It's not always the case, but it's a good way to guess. It's a, it's a good way to guess, okay? Um, very good. Uh, it probably is a formal word in English. Okay, so usually the shorter words are the more informal. The longer words are formal. The longer words are formal. The shorter words are informal. Okay, so now let's look at some other ways we can uh, look at formality. The second way to write formality uh, when we are talking about formal and informal writing, another thing to think about is contraction. Do you know what is contraction? I know. A contraction is a short form of a pronoun, like for example, I am. You said I'm. I can't. Uh, you say, for example, uh, I can't. Okay, can't here is contraction. I'm is a contraction. Okay, you have to write I am, not I'm. Not I can't, you have to write I cannot. You don't write I didn't, you have to write I did not. You actually, you, uh, you, um, you don't write, for example, um, I shouldn't, for example, or I, okay, so I'm, you have to say I should not, okay? Uh, contractions, contraction is very important. A contraction is a short form of a pronoun, like are you, he, she, we, and usually parts of a verb like am, would, will. So the short form is in this example. I am becomes I'm. Okay. Uh, I need someone to change our slide and show us next slide. Please show us. Uh-huh. Yes. Thank you. Stop here. Yeah. 
Uh, I am because I'm I'm in a contraction or you would can become you and that's a contraction we will becomes for example will is contractions we have to use we will okay yeah these are the list of contractions don't you don't for example write in your uh, actually essay don't you have to write do not you don't write can't you have to write cannot you don't write shouldn't you have to write should not huh something like this these are so important okay uh can you show us our previous uh slides please can you uh go back yes yes stop here just just a come go back before contractions before contract show us before contractions yes here thank you yeah uh very good very good <clears throat> okay okay uh my next point is about sentence type uh, I, I told you about the sentence type and sentence length okay about formal and informal if you write uh, and if you use uh, for example, short, I, I told you, if you use short passage and concise passage, it is formal. And sometimes if you show something in detail, uh, actually you use uh, informal. And it is very important to know about this. Okay, very good. Um, <clears throat> very good. Any questions? Any problems? Is it clear? Can you write something? Is everything clear? Can you write something for me? Is everything clear? Okay, very good. Now, uh, as I told you, when we are talking about formal versus informal, you will find things that are usually informal or short, uh, sorry, Formal are short and concise, and informal uh, are longer, okay, and with uh, lots of details. Um, actually, uh, informal writing, um, you will find sentence tends to be longer, okay? Um, it's a short sentence that if you know about clauses, if only has a clause. Um, now, compare this to something more complex, okay? Um, now, uh, complex sentence, complex sentence actually are um, complex sentences are um, formal, not informal. Because if you use informal language, you have to use easy words. Okay, as I told you. Uh, very good. The main point here is this: complex or longer, uh, complex and short and con and concise is usually. Uh, formal writing, whereas simple structures or simple sentences are more informal. Okay, so so try to write complex sentence and powerful structure sentences. Okay, uh, you will also find informal writing we use relative clauses. If you want to um, actually um, f informal writing. Uh, sometimes you use relative clauses, okay? Uh, so if you don't know what a relative clause is, uh, for example, something like who, which, that, when, okay? These are our relative clauses. Very good. Very good. Now, any questions? Uh, I want a person to show us a previous slide. Can you show us previous slide? Actually, to check something with you. Uh-huh. Now, go next. Go forward. Uh, here. Yes, yes, here, here. Stop here. Stop here, stop here, stop here. Yes, here. 
guys, look, pay, please pay, uh, pay attention to board sentence about types and lengths. Simple sentence and structures are informal and complex sentence are formal. Look at my examples. Look at my examples. I write something uh, on the board. These are some examples. OK, pay attention to the board and think about it and think about it. An example of a relative clause would be Jane Goodall, who works with chimpanzee. Champ it's a wonderful woman. So if you don't know about relative clauses, I, I recommend looking this up, okay? And please, 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 uh, I recommend it looking this up. Because when you use relative clauses, you can link some sentences with each other and make a powerful and complex structure, okay? To write better, to write better. Very good. <clears throat> but in this webinar, we don't have enough time to talk about uh, relative clauses, but they can really help your writing, especially if you're writing something in a formal situation in a formal situation all right now let's look at some more tips on how to improve our writing okay so the last thing i'm going to say about formal writing versus informal writing about the last point and i'm talking a lot about this because it's actually a very important part of writing i'm going to talk a little bit about a slang now can you show us the next slide please just go one step a next slide now we want to talk about a slang, a slang and swear words, exaggeration. <laughs> yes, here, please pay attention to the board. Please pay attention to the boards. Again, the last tip about formal versus informal. Now, um, a slang, it's a word we use with our friends. Words like cool, for example, cool banana, okie dokie. OK, how the these are a slangs, OK? Or for example, groovy. It is example. It's a, a best example for, uh, for actually a slang. Uh, but nobody says that anymore. So you know, there is all sorts of different types of a slang. It's a word that is very popular or an expression that is popular, but they are in informal language, not informal language. OK, so cool is a really good one or awesome. That's awesome. Yes, but these are a slang and they are in informal language. You didn't and you, you actually um, you shouldn't use in formal language. OK, and same with swear words. Swear words mean bad words. You know, sometimes you might say something to your friend. You might use different swear words when you talk to your friends. Hopefully not with the strangers, but with people you know well, but you would not use swear words in a formal sitting situation. So maybe you might use in a text, but you wouldn't use it in a formal writing situation. Also exaggeration words. What is an exaggeration word? Exaggeration words, uh, words means really. For example, you said she is really cute. She is very beautiful. This is very expensive, okay? Very, really, totally. These are exaggerations word, okay? Exaggeration words. There is a good example. He's very funny. She's very pretty. He's really handsome. He's totally hot, okay? So these types of words, very, really, totally, we usually save this for informal writing not formal writing. So if you are in university and you want to say something like very, don't use the word very. You have to, you have to uh, use a better words like many, like a lot of, huh? okie dokie. You don't say, for example, in essay, in the university you write, for example, she is very funny. She is very funny. Very, here's an exaggeration word. You have to change your word. 
Okay, you have to change your word. Uh, yes, very good. And another thing I wanted to say is there is a lot of words we use now. They short forms. Our words like, for example, lol, L-O-L, for laugh out loud. You don't use, you don't use L-O-L or B-4, okay, or L-M-A-O. LMAO, LOL, and B4. Okay, uh, these are words we use informally. We don't use this in formal writing. So it's important in formal writing to always spell out the words correctly, to use proper spelling, and to avoid some of these words. You might be seeing a lot on to the internet or in text messaging or on Facebook. Okay, so we have covered about formal and informal writing. My last tip for this part is about the importance of using variety in what you are writing. So what do I mean by variety? Well, sometimes when people write, they have certain words that they use again and again and again. And so there is not a lot of variety in their choice of words. Or you might have somebody else who uses the same sentence structure, for example, present perfect. OK, because she loves the present perfect. Uh, uh, she always use the present perfect. OK. Uh, now, I want to talk about variety. Let's look at an example. Let's look at, let's look at my example. I have a, here a sentence. Sales have increased. Look at the board. Please look at the board. Sales have increased. They have increased for many reasons. The increase is because people increasingly like spending money. Can you tell me which word did I use too much? Can you write for me? Can you write more for me? Which words? Can you write for me? Which words I use a lot here? Increase. Exactly. Exactly increase. Okay, you're correct. I use it one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's too much in piece of writing. There are a lot of other words. We could be using instead of increase, like we could using go up, we, we could use actually rise, uh, something like this. Something like this. Okay, okay. There are a lot of other words. And if you are not sure of another words for increase, a good idea is to check a source or your dictionaries to check synonyms, okay? That can help you add variety to your word choice. So if you make this kind of mistakes uh, where you reuse the same word again and again and again, try to learn some other words that have the same meaning. This will really help your writing and make it more interesting. The other thing I wanted to say is that we just talked about how you want a variety in words. You also want variety in sentence types. So you want to make sure that, you know, sometimes you use long sentences and sometimes you use short sentences. Sometimes you use words like although, when, despite, in spite of. And so instead of reusing the same sentences types and the same sentences structure, try to use different tenses. OK, and different structures in the sentences you write. Yeah, so different tenses and try to have different sentence lengths that will make your writing more interesting. Okie dokie. Now, actually, I think, uh, Dr. McMillan, I think it's over to you now. And uh, thank you for listening to me. If you have uh, any problems or questions, Feel free to ask me, guys. Uh, and I want actually Mr. Joe, I think, yes. Or Joe, I don't know, sorry for spelling wrong. Uh, show us the mic connection info, the last uh, slide. Can you show us the last slide, my, uh, actually, yes. Yes, my contact information. Thank you to show us my contact information. Uh, professors, dear professors, uh, actually, I think it's over to you now. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you 
Mr. Mrs. and uh, dear Dr. Um, Mimic Lynn, uh, for inviting me. Secondly, uh, I wanted to thank who the person behind the webinar program. And last, thank you all for attending this webinar. This is my email Thanks. and this is my number phone and this is my Instagram. If you want to email me, feel free to email me and ask your questions, guy. Thank you so much, sir, for the inspiring session. We feel really motivated and we also gained a lot of information through your seminar. So participants, it's time to ask query. So if you have any questions or if you want to give feedback regarding the session, it's time you can ask. I repeat, participants, if you have any queries or if you want to give feedback regarding the session, you can ask now. Good morning, sir. So first of all, thank you so much for the session, sir. It was really informative for all of us. So we have a question here for you, sir. Uh, sir, is there any certified course for English language and for development of English, sir? Can you suggest some? OK, uh, thank you all uh, for attending this webinar and uh, nothing more. Uh, actually, I want to uh, thank KSR College and University and KSR Women's College for enabling the learners to achieve their goals. So uh, thank you for being here and for creating this situation to learn more and lot. Uh, nothing more. Have a good one and goodbye. So So we have a question for you, sir.
OK, I'm here. Mm, if a person uh, want to ask me a question, uh, please write your question. I'm here to answer. <clears throat> no problem, I'm here. Yes, feel free to ask your questions. If you have questions, feel free to ask me some questions. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning too, yeah. Ask your question. Sir, thank you so much for the inspiring session, sir. We gained a lot of information. Uh, so we have a question for you. Yes, yeah. Uh, sir, is there any certified courses? Is, which is the best certified course for English language and development, sir? Can you suggest some? Yes, yes, why not? Uh, actually, uh, firstly, answer my question. Do you want to be an English teacher or no? Because I want to know to introduce some CPD courses or just want to uh, actually introduce some uh, certified courses for general English. Which one? Do you want for general English or do you want actually for uh, to be an English teacher? Which one? Oh, general English, sir. OK, for general English, I can introduce some courses first. Cush speaking courses and you can choose online with Westminster College London. For example, it's, it, it doesn't matter in, uh, for example, in where you live. OK, you can select this course online with Westminster College London. And if you uh, text me a message on WhatsApp, I can send you a lot of actually links about universities in London like me. I improve my uh, actually uh, speaking English with some uh, college, some colleges and universities in uh, Great Britain. Uh, I can send you, for example, uh, Westminster College London can help you to improve your general English with great trainers. Uh, and uh, the course called uh, cautious speaking courses and the uh, duration of this course is six uh, to nine months and for example the next course certified you can actually um, learn uh, you can check ef e-learning f uh, actually website uh, they work on your writing and reading especially in your s skills on your four s skills a speaking a skill listening a skills reading skills and writing skills and uh, they have some courses for you uh, that you can take some courses online again and you can enjoy but if you text me or if you email me i can send you a pdf or some links uh, some certified links that you can use to improve your general english or uh, improve your skills Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Happy to help. Happy to help. No problems. Happy to help others. If others have any problems or questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you so much, sir, for the session. Now I would like to invite Subhashree to present the vote of thanks. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you for attending. OK. No questions? More? No question more or no problems. Thanks, Autocrate. Highest form of thought. And gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. Good morning Thank to one and all so gather much. here on this wonderful morning. I would Thank like to present so the oath of thanks. This is Jivika of second year Thank BA English. So and I take this opportunity to thank the Respected Chief Guest, Mr. Hamid Safi Nijad of Quill Regulator, TEFL Holder, TESY Holder, 
He is the author, top executive member for enlightening us on the topic, friendly strategies for developing writing skills. Thank, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable and information section. I would like to extend my gratitude to the respective founder and chairman, Lion, Dr. K. Strangasamy, sir, in absentia. I also thank our vice chairman, Mr. R. Sinivasan, sir, and Mrs. Kavita Sinivasan, ma'am, in absentia. Thank you, ma'am and sir. It is my pleasure to thank our principal, Dr. M. Kartikeyan, sir, who not only spends time with us today, but encourages us every single day to achieve many endeavors. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thanks to all the HOD members and our faculties who worked hard to arrange and execute this section successfully. Thank you, teachers. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants who joined and glorified the section. Thank you. Once again, I thank everyone for your presence. So, shall we wind up the session, sir? Sir? Sir, could you hear me, sir? My name is Mimic Lane. Yes, Dr. Mimic Lane, I can hear you. Yes. Sir, uh, shall we wind up the session? Thank you very much, sir. It's my pleasure, and thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure too, sir. Yes, we can finish our session. Uh, yes, thank you all the participants. You can leave the session now. Thank you.